Good morning. Sorry for the being a couple of minutes late. I know several of us are in and out of other committees presenting bills. And uh, so thank you for indulging us these three minutes that we're starting late. Uh, it's good to see everyone today. And um, I would like to ask our clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Representative Sapicki. Here. Dixie. Griffey. Harris. Here. Haston, Here. Hicks, Here. Manis, Here. McKenzie, Here. Parkinson, Here. Reagan, Here. Rudder, Here. Sparks, Warner, Here. White, Here. Vice Chair Lady Weaver, Here. Chair Lady Moody, Here. Madam Chair Lady, you have a quorum. Thank you so much for that. And uh, members, you know, last year, excuse me, last year I, uh, I, I asked if you would indulge, indulge us again. Uh, I would like to ask anyone that would like to join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I would appreciate it if you'll join me. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mem members, uh, does anyone have any... Uh, am I losing control already? I do. Members, do you have uh, any uh, welcoming remarks or anything before we get started? All right, seeing none, we'll get started. Um, on our calendar... The very first bill is mine, and uh, I, I see other members with bills, so I'm going to roll mine to the heel of this calendar today, and we'll take up the other members. So that will move us to number two, uh, Representative Lamar, House Bill 0117. You have a motion and a second. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chair Lady. And that was so kind of you to let everyone go first. That was really sweet. Well, thank you for saying that. And let me and thank you. And let me add to the compliment. Um, Chair Lady Moody has been leading a charge on human trafficking prior to me even in, in entering the legislature. And I value her leadership and want to continue to follow in her footsteps. Um, and so what my bill HB 117 does, it takes her original bill for one-time human trafficking um, training to once every three years. And it's a 20-minute video that's developed by Restore Core, In Slavery, and Grow Free, which are three key human trafficking organizations. It's about a 20-minute video. But we all know the, the human trafficking tends to... Um, uh, change as technology evolves, as the game evolves, as the strategies evolve in order to ensure they can do this without getting caught. But we want to make sure our teachers are aware of what are the signs because many of these traffickers, it's not glamorous like we see on the movies where, you know, they're getting kidnapped in these countries or it's a bunch of immigrants. These are our average everyday girls in our neighborhoods who are leaving school, hanging out the corner store. They may be impoverished and these pimps come and 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 look for them and, and attach themselves to them, and they may go to school every day, but when they leave home, they are oftentimes involved in the trafficking um, ring. So we want to make sure our teachers are aware of the signs and being able to see this 20-minute video once every three years that they keep updated will be very valuable. Having more eyes on protecting our youth who are susceptible to the human trafficking um, initiatives that are going on. Excuse me. Thank you for that explanation. And I do, just for the record, there are no amendments traveling with this bill. No, ma'am. Thank you. Members, uh, does anyone have any questions for the sponsor? I see Chairman White. Thank you, Chairman Moody. Representative uh, Lamar, are you familiar with uh, Saving Lost Kids in Memphis, the Brian Callies Foundation? Sadie's Lost. Brian Callies Foundation, Saving Lost Kids. I have not. I need remind me. I need to introduce you to them. That they work on this that back okay. home. I would love that. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Chairman. Count me in on that too. <laughs> I'd be interested. I didn't know there was 
I know every store core in Memphis, but the more the merrier, right? Right. All right, thank you. Uh, who do we have next? Spark, Representative Sparks. Thank you, Representative Barr. Thank you for carrying this piece of legislation. I was going to share, uh, when I first got elected, I had a, a detective from Detroit, African-American lady, uh, Kathy Hines was her name, and she brought this issue up to me, and, and she was talking about human trafficking. And I just I just didn't believe that kind of stuff existed in our culture. You know, remember this is 11 years ago when I first elected. Uh, let me ask you this. You're, you're a little younger than most of us up here. As I'm, I'm a little older, so I've seen society kind of uh, digress or, you know, lack of a better term. Why do you think these things are happening in our culture? Because I'd have never thought this stuff happened 20 years ago. If it did, it was just so isolated. Why Why has this gotten worse, it seems like? What, what's your thoughts on that? Representative Lamar? Absolutely. In my personal opinion as London, yes, ma'am. Um, I think this is happening because, again, the reason why I'm bringing this bill it tends to evolve. It's also one of those crimes that have been talked about behind closed doors. Um, it's been very taboo. Um, there wasn't a lot of education about what's going on, but with the increase of technology, us being able to bring these issues to the forefront much, much quicker and then be able to engage the community in an advocacy way to help reduce these crimes. I think that's why you now all of a sudden see so much human trafficking uh, advocacy on the forefront because we do have more access to, to technology. Law enforcement do have access to more technology to help protect victims. And so the more technologically advanced we become, the more craftier and savvier we can get at reducing some of these crimes. But, you know, a lot of sex crime has historically, we don't want to talk about them. We don't want to talk about them. But we have to talk about it because it's real yeah. and it's happening in our community. And, you know, just as soon as 2018, it was like the second highest rising crime in Tennessee. And so we are really... Um, serious about protecting victims. This is one of the ways of doing it by supporting this bill so that our teachers can join into that fight and join into the advocacy and protecting our youth. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Anybody else want to have a comment or question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to uh, have a comment to express publicly how proud I am of our uh, one of our youngest members. Um, of this house. Uh, she is really, really bringing great legislation, meaningful legislation, impactful legislation, and um, and doing a good job of moving it. I, I just want you to know I'm proud of you and thank you for the legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Questions been called on House Bill 0117. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. With, with uh, all eyes. It moves on. It passes and moves on to calendar and rules. Thank you so much, committee. Thank you. Up next, we have House Bill 0073 by Representative Dixie. You have a motion and a second. It's just quick. It's, it's 973. I'm sorry. What did I say? Zero, zero, seven, three. <laughs> Gotcha. I'll get stronger glasses next week. Thank you. Thank That's you. Thank okay. you. That's why I need lots of help up here. Thank you. That's Proceed. What, That's I'm what sorry. we're all here for. So this is, <laughs> we're all here to help each other. And uh, thank you again for letting London and I go first. We really appreciate that. Shows the class that you have. Oh, Lord. I'll pay y'all later. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to roll downhill to the subcommittee as well. So that last comment Jeremy, was out of order. Jerry Hickey. <laughs> so this is my uh, it's advanced advanced uh, coursework act. Um, this bill is needed because, and I can give you some real life examples that actually happened to me. Um, this bill will allow a kid, a student that um, we allow the LEA to set a benchmarks of what they whatever they would like. So if a student meets these benchmarks, they're automatically placed in the next available advanced coursework if seats are available, whether it's in science, English, or math. Um, and just a quick side note story for me. So this is how I got into the honors pro honors program when I was in high school. Um, my my best friend's mom was the principal, and she told me. These are the classes you're going to take. These are honors classes because she knew I was an above average student. 
But that's how I got in. It was strictly off of her telling me that. So, and that still, that practice still continues to this day. This makes it more subjective. So it gives more students an opportunity um, to have um, a chance to take these classes that will prepare them for, uh, for, for the college coursework and, and for life. Um, with that, it's basically, I take any questions. It's, a, it's not a it's not a rocket science. It's just to try to make sure that every LEA has some basic policy that will allow these kids to participate in these classes. Thank you for that. And I did notice you have an amendment. And is it the one you're carrying? Can you read us the number, please? Four, excuse me, 004269. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You have a motion and a second on your amendment. And with your explanation you've given, uh, do you want to add anything else to explain the amendment or? Um, I think it just clarifies um, what, what I said before, so. All right. All right. We will be voting on Amendment 4269 added to the bill. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. Amendment is added to your bill. Uh, members, are there any questions for, okay, I see. I see Sapiki, uh, Representative Sapiki, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, uh, uh, Chair Lady Moody. Uh, Representative Dixie, I want to say thank you for bringing this. Uh, education creates opportunity. And these are the children that are going to uh, be the next people possibly sitting right here in these seats. And everything we can do to move move these uh, educational outcomes mm -hmm. further, that fan's pretty bad, isn't it? When you're standing right under it. You're standing right under it. <laughs> But uh, thank you for bringing this. Hopefully this will move more children towards more opportunity in their lives. And this is the type of legislation we need to continue to push through the education committee that, that creates that opportunity for our students. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize next, uh, Representative McManus. <laughs> Excuse me, Manus. Thank you, Representative Dixie. Thank you, Madam Chair. Larry. You know, Representative Dixie, if, if different schools offer different kinds of advanced courses like we already have kind of in Knox County, will the LEA policy be able to be flexible to those specific programs that are already existing? Yes, that's, that's the whole purpose of this bill is to give the flexibility to the LEA so they can design a program that fits their, their needs. Because at, at the end of the day, they understand the needs of their students and, and what classes and coursework that they have. So, yes, it does allow for that flexibility. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Next on the list, I see Representative Parkinson. Thank you, Chair Lady Moody. Chair Lady Moody, you you have the softest voice of a chairperson that I think, that, and, and 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 it's just so it's, it's so soothing to me. You know, hey, look, unfortunately, you don't have the gavel today, uh, Chair, <laughs> Chairman Sipicki. But uh, I just thank you, Chair Lady Moody, uh, and, and to my to my colleague. I just wanted to tell you, uh, uh, you know, kind of echo the words I, I gave to Representative Lamar. You know, these are some really, really good pieces of legislation um, and, you know, that will, you know, give our, our, our students, our children, you know, that edge that, that they need. And, and you would think that we, we, we would have done this a long time ago, but there are, you know, areas, just little little connecting areas that, you know, we may have missed. And this is one of those. And I, I really appreciate you bringing the legislation. And thanks. Thank I'm, I'm honored to be signed on to it, too. Oh. Thank you, Chair Lady. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see anyone else on the list to speak. So, represent. Thank you. Questions been called. Any objection to the question? Seeing none. All in favor of House Bill 0973 as amended, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. The bill moves on to government operations. All right. Thank you. And also, if you would like to sign on to the bill, I have a sign on sheet. All right. Thank you so much. All right, that brings us back, I think. Now we take up uh, House Bill 0782, and I will turn the gavel over to my lovely Vice Chair, Terry Lynn Weaver. Thank you. All right, members, uh, House Bill, let me make sure I got the right book, House Bill 782, uh, this bill will clean up language that's in statute to clarify that textbook and instructional materials, I just ran into it, didn't I? <laughs> that's okay, go for it, you're the chairman. <laughs> no, <laughs> I turned it over okay, to you. Okay, we're going we're gonna to take up House <laughs> Bill 782, and Chair Lady Moody, you are most 
recognized. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. So we do have an amendment. So I need a mo motion and a second on the amendment. We got that. Okay. Uh, you are recognized on the amendment. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and that code on the amendment is uh, 004479. And it was to clarify, again, this bill was, was intent was to close the loophole that was allowing some supplemental material that was strictly Common Core aligned to be used. And for the younger members or newer members, whichever the case may be, uh, in 2015, we passed a law that said Tennessee would no longer use Common Core standards. And of course, you know, that takes a, a while to get going. So as we have gotten to that level, um, the this was brought to our attention. And the amendment will clarify where, of course, we want to always think of our Tennessee standards first. And we do recognize that there will be some time uh, an uh, intersectionality of Common Core agreeing with our Tennessee standards. In that case, those are allowable. But when it's strictly Common Core, when it is blatantly labeled only Common Core, we those are the materials, the supplemental materials that we are objecting to. And uh, to, to give it some enforcement to it, we are allowing... Uh, of course, we believe this will start the recognition of any... Uh, infractions would start at your local level, but if it's not, if they are not dealing with it, and for whatever reasons, uh, it will go up to the, the commissioner of the Department of Education, and she will have the ability to uh, remove part of their BEP funding, according to, if it's an egregious, absolutely uh, refusal to comply, then that will go up that high. That will be the piece that will be the enforcement piece. And I probably butchered that, but I will hush and see, let the vice chair take over. Okay, members, you've heard the explanation. Very well done. Are there any questions on the amendment to House Bill 782? Uh, Chairman White, you are recognized. Thank you, Chair Lady Weaver and Chairman Moody. Is this is this member working on? Is this the one that came from the Senate, or do we know? Or um, and I may be confusing this with another bill that's out there, but I know there's. I'm getting a head shake. No, Chair Lady Moody, you're recognized. Matt, I don't want to. I'd kind of be guessing myself. Um, and I, Charlie Buffalino is in the audience, and I know he's on the. He's was approved to be to answer questions if we needed him. May we go out of session and do that? Yes, we may. We'll go on out of session. And Mr. Buffalino, you are recognized. Since you've been recognized already twice, go ahead and do it for the record again. Third time. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Charlie Buffalino, uh, Tennessee Department of Education. So, Chairman White, this amendment is the same as the Senate with one word change. It changes an and to an or, um, but that is the only different difference with the amendment uh, that the Senate adopted in their education committee last week and that will be on the floor tomorrow. Chairman White, you're recognized. Thank you. And this is this is kind of helps satisfy some of the uh, issues we have with some of our state superintendents, right? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I believe so. I think this adds clarity, and I want to sort of acknowledge Chairman Haston. Um, we had a verbal amendment in subcommittee last week that I think started that process, and then legal services tightened that up even further, which uh, brought us to the point with this clarifying language now. As, as Chair Lady Moody said, I think it makes the intent very clear and explicit in the bill language that we're just talking about materials that are exclusively aligned to Common Core state standards or are marketed or otherwise identified as Common Core state standards. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions for uh, Chairman Sapicki? You're recognized. Thank you. Mr. Buffalino, in this bill, there's two sections in here. One is about um, LEAs kind of self-policing themselves, making sure 
principals or teachers stay in compliance with, with, with this law that as it moves forward. Um, and I want to just a brief comment on that and also about the section that was added in to give the commissioner the authority that if she finds or he finds a violation of this code, that they, they shall withhold BEP funds. However, that is at the discretion of the commissioner. Thank you for the question, Chairman. Um, yes, I think that's 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 a very worthwhile thing to note. I think first and foremost, um, we do anticipate as whenever there are changes to our law that our local districts are going to take care of those. Whenever we hear about a violation of state law or a perceived violation, you know, our first call is always to reach out to the director of schools, talk to them, give them an opportunity to look into it. And I, I fully am confident that that will be the case with this law if it if it is to become law as well. Um, but yes, there is explicit language in the bill that states that if there is an intentional and purposeful violation uh, of this code, that the commissioner shall withhold funds. Um, and so I think it, it makes that that intent very clear in terms of that this is something that the General Assembly would take seriously. But even in those instances, we, of course, are going to talk to locals first and give them the chance to address it locally. You're recognized. And just to clarify, that that authorization still does give the commissioner the flexibility to determine what amount would be based off of the act that, that has taken place. Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay, we have further questions. Uh, Representative Harris, you are recognized. Representative Sapicki already asked that question that I initially was going to ask, but um, years ago, when this, I remember when Core, um, when Core Common Core was actually in place, um, the changes were made to what we considered the SAT, uh, and so those changes went into effect in 2015 to 2016 to include Common Core. Um, and so with them remove with us removing it now, how are we going to make sure that those students still are able to get the information they need to be able to satisfy the SAT? Uh, that's a good question. Thank you, Representative. Um, I think there has been a process since 2015 for states that have moved away from Common Core like Tennessee and publishers to have to realign their standards in a way that align to state standards. That is something that every publisher that's in a state that is on the approved list or has a waiver has had to go through. Um, you know, it was repealed and replaced in 2015. Um, our new Tennessee state standards were online in 2017 and 18, and it certainly take, took a process to make sure that we had the rigorous sort of state standards that we did. Um, folks like the SAT and the AACT have had to go through a similar process to make sure that there's sort of alignment there. Um, and obviously those are important assessments in terms of assessing post-secondary student readiness. So that's a process that certainly hasn't been unique to Tennessee or that specific provider, but that someone really, that across the country folks have had to do over the course of the last five, six years. Thank you. Uh, Representative Reagan, you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, lady. I just want for the, for the sake of clarity, uh, this bill has authorized the commissioner to withhold funds. The commissioner does not have the power to hold, withhold funds unless specifically authorized. Is that correct? Uh, no, that that's not correct. The, the commissioner has broad discretionary authority for any violation of, of Title 49 law to withhold fundings. The, the difference here is that it actually mandates that withholding of funding in the legislation, but she has broad discretionary authority to withhold funding um, for, for any violation of Title 49. Thank you for the clarity. Any further questions for Mr. Buffalino? Seeing none, we'll go out of session and get back on the bill. Back into session. Thank you, Madam Chair. I need some brushing up. Okay, now we are back on the amendment. Uh, are there any further questions for the sponsor on the questions on the amendment of 4479? Question on the amendment. There's been a question called. All right, we're ready to vote. So all those in favor of putting uh, the amendment 4479 onto House Bill 782, signify by saying aye. aye. Any no's? Ayes have it. All right, we are back on the bill as amended, House Bill 782. We're ready to vote. So all those in favor of sending House Bill 782 to calendar and rules signify by saying aye. aye. Any no's? No no's? All ayes? You're going to calendar and rules, chair lady. Would you like to gavel us out? Seeing that there are, is there a motion to, to adjourn? Okay. <laughs> We're out of here. <laughs>